Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. Please be sure to like, subscribe. Please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. Today's video is all about living a soft life, no matter what is going on around you. The eight keys to controlling your emotions. I know these gas prices are stressing us out. I know we have many triggers, bad parents, messed up relationships, even the kids. The kids are driving you crazy. How are you doing? How have you been coping since 2020 with everything that's been going on? Have you been surviving? And I know with social media and all of these expectations and everyone around us, especially around the summertime it can get so depressing to see everybody be stress-free and travel and it seems like everybody's doing something and with inflation and the way things are going you're just sitting at home you may be stuck maybe the finances are not financing the coins are not coining <laughs> I get you and it's all just been one big anxiety one big depression one big stress we have so many things that stress us out every day and controlling your emotions may not be that easy for some people this is what we're going to talk about in this video before we get too deep I want to let you know that these tips that I'm about to give will not only help you to control your anxiety and emotions to where yes I'm not saying things will never get to you we're humans we're gonna be upset things will get to us but it'll help us to actually overcome them and cope and handle them in a healthy way the biggest way of living a soft life and not letting things get to you is by not caring okay I did not include those in my eight tips this is just a bonus I'm not even going to put it in the end of the video I'm going to put it in the beginning of the video do not care <laughs> you're like Kareem what do you mean by that I mean about everything that just does not serve you what comes first is God then you than everyone else and that is even biblical you cannot help anyone if you're not in good shape you cannot help anyone if you're not healthy even jesus recognized that i cannot go preach to a people that are hungry and not fed we have to feed them first and jesus was like no i'm not going to preach to them while they are starving and their stomach is growling we have to take care of their needs first and he fed them do not just go preach to people and throw the bible at them when they're struggling how can you help them but how can you help someone if you're struggling yourself you know the blind cannot lead the blind the helpless can't always help the helpless if i don't have money to feed myself how can i feed you do you understand what I'm saying? If mentally I'm depressed, I'm not encouraged, I'm stressed, how can I encourage you? And I know there are many people that encourage people in their lowest point, but it, it is so much sweeter when you can encourage someone once you have taken care of your mental. This is why I say after God, you must take care of the body that you got. And now if you're constantly being the people pleaser, the yes man, the person who cannot say no, the person who still, you know these things, you watch these videos, you hear people talk about this over and over again about putting yourself first, stop burning yourself out and things like that, rest say no today i don't want to go out i want to stay home and take care of myself today i don't want to do this or really put myself i'm not mentally there to put myself there for someone yet i need to take a mental break i need to rest and also fighting with people being combative stop caring about those things like you guys have no idea how unimportant certain things is a lot of things that used to upset me just do not because once you start to absorb and let all of these negativity get to you it just festers in your body and become cancerous cells and become make you sick it makes you sickly stop caring stop fighting and going back and forth with people literally tell people i'm living my best life in little duval's voice I ain't going back and forth with none of you. <laughs> I'm not going back and forth with people. It is what it is. It is what it is. And it is what it isn't. If you're not happy, oh well. I'm not going back and forth. It's not worth it. When you start to adopt that state of mind, people cannot get to you. So what someone insulted you, said something, mentioned something about you, did this. Why do I care? What will you do for me? You are not God. 
You cannot add or remove anything from me without my permission. You cannot change my mood without my permission. I have to grant you access to me for you to get to me and my emotions. It's not freely given. My anger is expensive. My reaction is expensive. I am expensive and you do not have access to me. And that's just the reality. This is how you have to approach people. It costs you to get a reaction from me. But responding to people in your everyday life, it's not making me money. Why do I have to respond to you? It's not helping my mental health. It's not making me money. It's just making me angry. You have to see it like that. If you are a so-called prize, whether you're man or woman, if you're a high value man or woman, then why are you so cheap with your emotions? Why can anyone have access to your emotions? Why are you so cheap with your emotions? You determine your price, how easily obtained you can be. Are you gonna be low value and cheap? Or are you gonna be pricey and expensive? Does a conversation with you comes easy for any person or is it expensive? Am I choosing to respond to high quality conversations? Or is any little thing, any little dusty, any little person says is going to trigger me, get me out of character to bring me to their place and now I'm cursing, I'm yelling, I'm going back and forth, I'm mad, I'm angry. Is it worth it? It's not. Whether it's family, whether it's friends, coworkers, your kids, in-laws, whoever it is, it's never worth it to be so cheap. Sometimes you just have to smile and people may think you're weak. They may think that you're not tough enough. You're a kitty cat, if you get what I'm saying. So what? I laugh things off a lot and I choose who gets my anger. It's not that I don't get angry. It's not that I go, don't get upset. I choose who will experience that. Who do I value in my life enough to give them the pleasure of me being angry? Stop being cheap. Stop selling yourself short. You're expensive. Your emotions are expensive. Your energy is expensive. When you think like that, that is the number one key to controlling your emotions. That is the number one key to never letting anyone get to you. And it's the number one key to living a soft life. Because what is a soft life? It's just making life easier for you. And life is easier when you know your worth. Going back and forth with men, begging people to be in your life, begging people to be nice to you, it's because you don't know your worth. And a lot of people use Beyonce like she's the icon right now of our generation, especially in the black community. And she don't respond to nothing because she knows her price and value. If she's going to respond, it's going to be in a song. It's going to cost you to hear her response. And she's made songs responding to the haters. That's the energy you need. If I'm going to respond to you, it's going to make me money. If I'm going to engage with you, it's gonna make me money. But you can be so valuable, valuable, outselling people, doing all this, but you're responding to everything. And it cheapens you. It makes people not respect you. You lose your value. Every time you're steadily responding to everything, people know they can provoke you. Any little random person can get to you. But if you really wanna cope with things, live a good life, a soft life is you gotta stop caring and know your value. Stop being cheap. Let's start with the biggest tip for me that I'll say out of the eight is prayer or meditation for those who don't necessarily, who aren't religious, you know? Meditation, prayer, and God really opened my eyes with simple tips and tricks to really just calm things down. And meditation also can open your eyes just to take a deep breath, slow down and think and assess the things in your life that are not helping you or benefiting you. So that is number one. Number two is identify your triggers. Are your parents your triggers, your spouse, your kids, your friends, etc.? Learn what situations or actions cause you stress or increase your anxiety. 
Notice what anxiety feels like for you because it's different for everybody. Get to know the body feelings that are part of anxiety. Describe them to yourself. When you're anxious, do you feel butterflies, sweaty palms, shaky hands, a faster heartbeat? Know that these feelings are part of the body's normal response to a challenge. They're not harmful. They fade on their own. And next time they happen, try to notice the feelings without getting upset that they're there. Accept them. Let them be there. You don't have to push them away, but you don't have to give them all of your attention either. See, if you can't let them be in the background, then you will never get too far. So understand that. Are there some people that when you talk to or they call you and their phone ring, your chest starts to hurt, your your heart is racing faster, and you just feel like, ah, oh, I don't wanna pick up, oh my goodness. You just feel all the time stressed to talk to them. Or when you're pulling into the driveway of your home, how does it make you feel? Do you feel like, I don't wanna go inside, and you stay in the car just a little bit longer? What in your home is stressing you out? My home used to be like that for me until I designed and set my home away for it to be my safe haven, my peace, my privacy. You know, I'm excited to go home after a long day. I can't wait to get on my bed. I can't wait to get out of my car and come and be in my tub and be in my own kitchen. How can you change your environment in your home? And if your home is a source of stress for you, is it the people? Now, if it's the people, Face the situation. Don't wait for anxiety to go away. You might think that you'll put off speaking in class until you no longer feel anxious about it, but it doesn't work that way. It's facing the anxiety that helps you manage it. That is called exposure. Now, if it's home, if you're already married and you already have kids and things like that, and you're like, you know, I can't leave my husband, I can't leave my wife for a source of anxiety, there are other things that you can do to make sure that you lessen that. Some people can be in a stressful or toxic or even violent and dangerous environment to where it's a source of anxiety for them that are enduring a lot and they don't really know how to cope or manage that. If you cannot get help from a professional and if you cannot get help from authorities, you might be feeling stuck and don't know what to do and scared and don't know how to approach the situation. I'm not a licensed psychologist or therapist, so I can't really give full on advice for myself except to try your hardest to speak to a free professional. You can always Google online where you can go for resources that are free, that are anonymous. There are even helplines and call centers that are literally anonymous where you can speak about your problems and pour out to them. And I also advise anyone in whatever country you're in, Drop the resources if you have them also, because I know not everyone lives in America. Drop resources for your state, for your city, for your country, for people like that, you know? And you never know what help is out there if you're not looking for it, you know what I mean? But if it is something you can help, and if it is something that you can talk to your spouse about or go to therapy, or you can sit your kids down and figure out a schedule and things that's gonna help make life easier for you, then tackle that. If it's a mother and law if it's a father-in-law or people that you can kind of avoid and love from a distance then do that also but do not just avoid it and push it back and keep yourself in the same situation day in and day out because those type of situations really shorten your life and it really takes the softness away from you from how you're living but with the things that you can help, if you see a friend calls and it stresses you out every time you have to talk to them, then you know, you know what, this person may not be for me. Let me find maybe a gentler way to remove myself so that I don't have to feel this way. If it's a boyfriend, you know to cut them off. If maybe school does this for you, maybe school is a source of anxiety. I always mention the story how my sister had a roommate in college in her dorm that literally got a B, a B in her finals. And she was so stressed that she went to hit her head multiple times on a tree trunk. She was that anxious. And my sister was traumatized. She was so traumatized with what she saw for those wondering the roommate did get help and everything like that but there are some people work and school can be the stress for them is it the major do you feel pressured to do things that you don't want to with your family how can you approach that get help and don't wait till it's too late number three is avoid or limit alcohol and other substances 
for me, when I felt like crap and there was parties that my friends were throwing, there were things that were that we were all doing in gatherings, I always felt like I needed to be drunk a little bit tipsy or you know easy <laughs> in order to enjoy myself because I felt so sluggish and low motivation and not myself that I was like let me just get a quick pep me up or you know you know what I mean and oh my goodness guys for some alcohol use has increased during the pandemic also alcohol is a depressant while in the moment it may help you feel calm there's always an after effect you may notice the next morning you feel anxious or on edge this may be due to mild detoxification which may make you feel jittery or anxious alcohol may also affect your sleep even one drink may disrupt your natural cycle and leave you feeling restless the next day. Every time I drank, I had insomnia. And even though I slept, I thought I was sleeping, I would look at my wristband, uh, my Fitbit, and notice that my quality, my sleep score was very low. My sleep quality was very low when I drank. I would still wake up feeling tired. And over time, it ages you. And it's not just about drinking, it's any other substance that you use to pick you up. Even caffeine, even caffeine can do that to you. So when you're already feeling bad, these things will just make it worse because now you have to struggle with insomnia, which makes things worse. And if you ever had IBS, you know when you haven't slept on IBS and you're getting four, four hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, your stomach is crap the next day. So sleep is very, very important, okay? I will say with my anxiety, there are natural herbal medications you can, like your therapist may assign to you. You know what I mean? That THC <laughs> or anything like that, that may calm things down under prescription and care and things like that, that, you know, is a little bit more natural for you in those cases i'm not talking about those type of substances but anything that's going to alter your sleep that may alter your mood may not be good for you in the end and can make things worse and can make you feel worse so avoid those type of things also number four focus on what you can change many times anxiety stems from fearing things that haven't even happened and may never occur for example even though everything is okay you may still worry about potential issues such as losing your job becoming ill or the safety of your loved ones replace your fears by changing your attitude about them for example stop fearing to lose your job and instead focus on how grateful you are to have a job come to work determined to do your best instead of fearing your loved one's safeties spend time with them or express your appreciation of them with a little practice you can learn to dump your anxiety and pick up a more positive outlook at times your anxiety may actually be caused by a real circumstance in your life perhaps you're in a situation where it's realistic to be worried about losing your job due to high company layoffs or talks of downsizing you know gas prices all those stuff maybe transportation now is an issue when anxiety is identified as being caused by a current problem then taking action may be the answer to reducing your anxiety so for example you may need to start job searching or scheduling interviews after work if, if you catch my drip. Number five, enjoy small activities that help you escape reality for a bit, like a comedy show, music, delicious foods. It's also okay to daydream. At night, when I wanna wind down, I always play comedy. If I don't wanna laugh, I wanna play music, I play music, I light a candle, and I'll try to play little games on my phone that sometimes lower my anxiety, or I'll try to read a good book, or I'll even do something so boring or mundane, like file my toenails or something. Like I know those are things that are calming to me. They even have adult coloring books that you can use or anything that will relax your mind. Just put you in that space where you're not thinking about work, you're not thinking about the day, but you're doing something that is calming. I also watch satisfying videos here on YouTube. And also if you need music, that's gonna help you sleep. And that's like eight to 10 hours long. I'll put some links in the description of my brother's music page where he does soft, gentle music like that with rain in the background. That will definitely help you to quiet your mind and fall asleep. But by all means necessary, it's okay to distract yourself. I know a lot of people say it's dangerous to live in your brain and your head, but many times with someone like me, when I was suffering with anxiety and I was stressed, I found a lot of refuge in daydreaming. You guys have no idea. I just was daydreaming of a better 
scenario with things of a life of ease of things that were just more gentle just happier thoughts and it became to a point where it would calm me down it's important to not stay there and live in your head but it's okay to live in your head at times it may be most helpful to simply redirect yourself to focus on something other than your anxiety that's why it's okay to daydream you may want to reach out to others also do some work around your home or engage in an enjoyable activity or hobby Number six is keep your space clean and smelling good. Oftentimes anxiety makes us forget to groom our homes and things can get all messy and cluttered. The messier your home, the messier your mind. Ask friends for help to clean up if you don't have the strength or hire a cleaning service like Molly Maid, etc. Or do things little by little if you don't have friends or you're unmotivated and things like that. Like for instance, in the morning, wash your dishes. Be like, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make my bed and wash the dishes. And in the afternoon, I'll mop. And in the evening, I'll take the garbage out. Like break your task up into little pieces until you start seeing your home being cleaner. You guys have no idea how a clean room can really enhance your mood this is scientifically proven and also the scent of lemon this is why a lot of oils and liquids that people use to mop their floors are made with lemon scents and lavender those are the two scents that really calm you down and that put in your home use to wipe your your counters you know and things like that to spray around and also mint it will really lift up your mood or find a good candle Fresh linen is my go-to scent for candles. I love that. And I also, I also love citronella, which is like, um, it's like that scent that keeps bugs away you put outside. It almost has a lemony, lemongrass scent. It reminds me of Haiti a lot because in Lagonav, where I was born, it was a scent that they made soaps with that we use for candle wax and all of those so it's a comforting scent for me as well as fresh linen the scent so i always light a candle with those two scents and it always relaxes me number seven is work out sleep and eat clean even you don't have to work out an hour to two hours a day and you don't need a treadmill you don't need the gym you can walk in place like there were days i didn't want to get on my treadmill i didn't want to go to the gym i didn't want to like use my weights or anything like that i would walk in place and put on a show and get my heart rate up and i would monitor my heart rate with my fitbit or something like that and it works the same way so that's all you need put on something interesting and just go to town put on some music and in 30 minutes and you're good make sure you're sleeping at a decent time do not make it a habit to stay up so late and try to eat as clean as possible say no to certain things that you know is going to be bad on your skin is going to put on those extra pounds and it's also going to mess up your mental sugar and excess oil and cholesterol has scientifically and medically been proven to make us depressed that's science so avoid those type of high carb foods high sugar foods that are not natural because they will not make your mood better they will not junk food will not make your mood better the foods that even will make you want to take your own life there are foods like that that really just keep us in a funk and they make them so addictive that we can't stop eating them but we also won't stop feeling how we feel Number eight, try to look and feel your best. We all know when you look good, you feel good. It's as simple as just showering. I know when mentally we're not all there, the worst thing that we can do, the last thing we're gonna be thinking about is how we look. That's also scientifically proven also, okay? And psychologically proven. But when you're constantly passing by the mirror and you see that your face is really oily and you haven't washed it for the day, your hair is like super greasy and just very unkempt and your outfit has like pizza sauce and all of this stuff in it, your house is messy, you haven't waxed your eyebrows in a while, your nails are a little chipped, things like that, it can just make you feel worse even subconsciously if you're not paying attention to it. If you notice when you look in the mirror and you've actually been well-groomed, you're showered, you smell good, 
it can instantly lift up your mood. What I do at night, I have my night perfume. I will spray on my wrist, I will spray on my earlobes and things, it's not too heavy, but the smell alone calms me down when I spray myself. Body mist, put on your lotion. Make caring for yourself a ritual, a love affair. Make it romantic. And I mean that not in a sensual way, if you catch my drift, but even applying lotion on your legs at night, make it a ritual, you know, to moisturize your skin, massaging your hands with your oils. Don't see it as, ah, it's too many steps, I'm too lazy, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not inconsistent. I'm not consistent enough, but tell yourself that, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to love myself, take time with myself. And as you're doing that, give yourself positive affirmations as you're massaging your hands. I'm grateful for my hands because they help me to carry things. A lot of people had to amputate their arms. They don't have arms. I'm grateful that I have arms. I'm grateful that I can hug my children with these arms. I can take care of my children, my loved ones, and my myself with these hands. These hands help me with a lot. Moisturize your feet. I'm grateful that I can stand on my two feet every day because I know some people don't have that privilege, that luxury. And I'm grateful that my feet has kept me steady this whole time. Appreciate them. Send loving vibrations through your body. And definitely as you're moisturizing your face, I'm grateful for my face. I'm grateful that I have eyes, that I have nose to breathe from, a mouth. I'm not on a machine. I can speak with my mouth. You know, even brushing your teeth. You do that, you will start to see your body, your brain. Even if you don't mean it at first, the brain has to obey what you say. It has to obey your thoughts. And if you keep saying these positive affirmations and you keep thinking them, your body will have to obey and God will also see you have gratitude and this will bring a lot of joy into your life and you will have to, you will start to love yourself a little bit more. Don't worry about your weight. Don't look in the mirror and as you're massaging your arms, I used to be guilty of that. I'm like, oh my God, my jiggly arms, this and that. No, don't talk like that. I love my arms. I love every single part of myself, my stomach, everything, every role. I don't care for the imperfections. I'm just I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be here and my body is what's keeping me alive and I'm grateful to be in this body. Once you start practicing these things, not only will it be extremely difficult for these bad moods and bad emotions to take hold of you, but you'll find that you have a lot more self-control and it's easier for you to cope with a lot of things and that depression will just be gone. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Comment below your coping mechanisms and please do not forget to share resources for your city your country your state in the comments you just never know who that might help so do not neglect that if you do have the resources i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time